to this game, but it is one and one apiece for both of these teams. Looking to close it out on a positive note this week, the picks and bans are underway, and immediately we see a ton of target bans. All the hook champions banned out from Matt Life in fairly standard UDR and Nidalee bans towards RF Legendary and Trick. No surprise here. Obviously, I am Matt Life showing just how proficient he is on hook champions in general. Udyr, Trick's best champion, no doubt. They are an RF legendary, of course. Probably one of the best Nidalee players in North America. So, no surprises yet. It'll be interesting to see what they opt to ban now. And if they try to take anything away, Fizz still open. Will they have to ban it away from Fishing for Earth? And they do. I well, mean, at fizz, this point, yeah. <laughs> there's there's no reason why you're going to give uh, Fair Falls Fizz. That it doesn't work. Vigar actually the other ban coming out against Strompist. So that is going to be so many target bans. I can't hold all these bans, but that is also going to mean that there is a lot of powerful pickups to let open. I'm thinking Lucian. I'm thinking Jana. I'm thinking Corky. I'm thinking so many champions. Nar is left available. I mean, there's so many quote-unquote OP picked. We're going to have to see what goes first. And, well, that was really, really quick. I didn't even realize it was already picked. The Janna gets taken here by Trick2G. Well, one of the things to consider here is that Janna is obviously the safest pick to start with. It's really hard to counter her in lane. And even the best counters to her in lane aren't really aggressive and don't really get you an early advantage. So... Uh, no surprises that it's picked up. Will the Sandra get picked up here by Night Blue's team? Obviously, a champion that both teams have played. Both teams are pretty comfortable with, and it's in the past been a critical part of both teams' strategies. We do see it hovered over here. Rengar for Night Blue might come out. I would disagree with this. We saw Think Card last night crushing Night Blue's Rengar, and I imagine Trick Two G would be able to do the same. So risky pick, but potentially strong pick with the Rengar. Well, we'll have to see here. That does all. We did mention the Lissandra being taken away. That's a huge, huge one right here. Lissandra being picked up for fishing for Earth. One of the other champions he's seen come to Roland that wasn't Fizz. And like you said, the Rengar pickup here is destroyed by Kha'Zix, destroyed by early aggression, which is something that we saw Trick putting on just last game against Cutie Pie's team. They didn't wind up winning that game. However, he was invading enemy jungle. They were taking things away as early as level two, level three. And he was doing it with RF Legendary kind of at his backside. So. The duo jungle, the duo invade strategy that Trick is putting down could potentially come to bite Night Blue because, like you said, he's very susceptible to that early jungle pressure. Rengar, especially, doesn't necessarily have the same kind of dueling potential that, like, a Kha'Zix, Elise, and those champions would have. But then again, that's not exactly who you're going to see Trick 2G playing anyway. So we'll have to see here. Maybe Night Blue just got inspired by Impaler's Rengar play and just wants to try to do the same thing. Impaler, obviously, a very proficient Rengar player. Night Blue. Solid jungler, and I think the Rengar's pick's big weakness is a lack of reliable clear, but we know we did see Impaler clear pretty well and pretty healthily when he got that big leash, so as long as the team gives Nightblue a big leash, I imagine he'd be able to do the same. Uh, Azir locked in for Strompus. Azir, obviously a very strong late game champion, dishing out tons of damage, easily comparable to an AD carry in the late game, and uh, you know, not a champion we've seen him play yet, or a champion I think we've seen uh, that's seen play at all, if I'm correct. Do you remember if uh, Azir seen any play? I want to say I saw it on Void Boy's team, but it wasn't Void Boy playing it. So don't don't exactly remember, but Azir was Azir was one of those champions that makes can make flashy plays and deals a lot of damage and scales really well into the late game, but can get blown up if you actually land things on him. So we'll have to see if it's going to be as effective as they want it to be. I mean, they have the Corky once again for Trick 2G's team as well. The Zir in this situation could force them into the small corridors or push them away from an objective that Trick's team is going to be sieging, so I can see that being quite effective. I just don't exactly know how proficient Strompist is going to be in actually playing the champion. Yeah, once again, I think Azir is a huge skill cap champion, and might be a good choice against this Lissandra. You know, they both function very well in tight quarters. Lissandra able to offer a lot more CC, whereas Azir is able to offer a lot more damage. And, of course, Azir has an excellent Rengar mashup, able to push him away. But, like you said, it all comes down to mechanics here. And is Strompist a competent Azir player? Something that remains to be seen, RF Legendary once again looks like he may pick up the Rek'Sai pick. And uh, once again, a reminder to the chat that if Rek'Sai is locked in, he will actually be replaced by Aatrox on the overlay because that is currently not working. So if you see an Aatrox locked in, it is a Rek'Sai pick. WTF um, Aatrox? Pride of EU what? <laughs> Pride of EU? Um, not this time. No, just that uh, uh, Rek'Sai pick. Jax as well. Um, Ooh! Jungle Jax? 
Could it be? Is Trick 2G going to bless us with Jungle Jax? That's been something that's been picking up popularity more recently on 4.21, no longer 420, rest in peace. But the Jungle Jax is extremely interesting. I'm, this is a, a jungler that you wouldn't necessarily think, you know, you think like of Jax in the top, and you build a Trinity Force, you build a Blade of the Rune King, you start becoming unkillable and start dishing out a lot of damage. He split pushes, he duels, he does everything you would want him to do in top lane. That's kind of how Trick plays the jungle. He doesn't necessarily do a lot of early ganking, He doesn't, but he has an, the capability to do so. Jumping in, stunning somebody, sounds very reminiscent of our favorite man bear pig udir kind of character so being able to pick up a champion like that it seems like something right up his alley you do have to of course remember that jack still is going to take a lot of time to scale into the later stages of the game so being able to push and pull a team across the map and get him the farm he needs could be the way to go about it but we'll have to see if that's what they do of course Oh, I thought there was actually a Heimerdinger that was being locked in, but it looks like it's going to wind up being a placeholder for Gnar instead, so my enthusiasm is completely gone. And you know, Gnar is a character I completely forgot about. I, I know you're hyped for Heimer, but I'm pretty hyped for Gnar. Gnar is incredibly powerful on this patch, does a lot of damage, offers a ton of CC in the late game, and I was so hyped about these target bans against supports and mid laners that I forgot about how many powerful top laners there are in the pool. We did see Lissandra, one of the most popular picks, but Rumble was still available and Gnar was still available, and we do see the Gnar getting picked up there. Uh, Moonway has shown in the past that he knows how to play Gnar uh, in solo queue. We haven't, I don't think we've seen him yet on it in this tournament, but I'm excited to see him play it, and I'm excited to see the team utilize it. Another kind of hard engage champion, <laughs> and maybe able to combat that Lissandra's hard engage with some of his own. Well, we are just waiting for the players to rejoin the lobby and get the picks and bans back underway. In case you guys are just tuning in or didn't necessarily have the picks and bans before, Jana and Corky were going to be the bottom lane from Trick's team. Azir was going to be in the mid lane. We had a Jungle Jax and RF Legendary returning to that Rek'Sai in top lane from their side. I'm very interested to see. We saw the synergy between Udyr and Rek'Sai. We didn't really see it between Volibear and Rek'Sai in the game against Cutie Pie's team. But how is it going to go hand in hand with a Jax in the jungle is the big, big question. Mm, and I don't really know the answer to that one, to be completely honest. Well, yeah, I think Jax is a big unknown factor here. And to be fair, Rek'Sai still could be played in the jungle. But it's much more likely that Trick2G is going to opt to pick up Jax here. So... Don't know exactly how this is going to play out, but I imagine that if they can get through the early game or get an advantage early game, that that Jax pick is going to come in huge. Mm -hmm. And also on Night Blue side, if you guys are just catching up to speed, there was going to be a Lissandra in the mid lane. It was a Gnar in top lane, Rengar in the jungle, the Lissandra we mentioned before, then the Graze and Annie bot lane. And Graze and Annie, they're going up against Corky and Jana. You normally think, oh, that's a pretty safe lane. Jana has the shield. Corky can stay far away. He has a lot of burst potential as well, mixed magic damage in there. But then you go up against the Graze, who are already set against Lucian, was a very great pickup. Can do kind of the same thing against Lucian he does against Corky. Then you have the Annie being thrown into that as well there is so much burst damage potential coming out from the bottom lane of night blues team it's going to be really really scary we'll have to see if trick's team has the same discipline that cutie pie's team does and try to go for that lane slot to avoid the 2v2 disadvantage yeah i well the interesting thing about that 2v2 lane is that i don't really think that rexi wants to be in a 1v2 situation and obviously I don't really think that Nar does either, although Nar does have a significant advantage in the sense that he has a ranged way to farm. So, really curious how these land setups are going to be. We did see Cutie Pie's team swap last time, and I wonder if either of these teams are going to look to make that kind of technical play. And depending on which one does, will the enemy team be able to respond with smart rotations or smart map movement? It's a, it's a big question in these challenger kind of games. Well, we're going to have to see. Vision control has been kind of the entire story of this week of the Omen encounter. We've had Trick2G picking up many a sight stone to supplement that for his team. We've also seen it be the live or die by the dragon buff kind of week. Four dragon buffs and a baron buff are what it took for Night Blue's team to take the game in about 30 minutes from Kitty Pie's team. And Trick's team has really adjusted their standards from pushing out lanes and trying to grab towers to falling back and picking up those buffs pretty much uncontested, not necessarily going for a big all out engagement in those circumstances. We'll have to see if the same thing is going to hold true in this game for both of these teams. It is the last game of this week of the Omen Encounter, but if you guys out there in Twitch.tv land are very, very sad, upset about that, 
fret not. You guys can check out omen.gg. You can already vote on your favorite team captains for next week. The order will be decided by your fan vote. And let's not forget, guys, when you start voting for your favorite captains, you're also entered for a chance to win one of two Omen laptops from hp big shout outs to hp big shout outs to intel as well for helping us sponsor this tournament it's also a schedule on board so you guys can see that the drafts go live every single monday and the games go live every single saturday and sunday here on the weekends we are going to take a quick commercial break before we leap onto the rift for our last game of the evening here at the omen encounter check out the website guys and we'll be right back after a quick commercial break that's not Aatrox. No, it's RF Legendary Rek'Sai on the blue side. We're in here for game number three of the Omen Encounter. Day two, week number two. Optimus Tom alongside Tifa. All pumped up to bring you this final match of the evening, guys. Both Night Blue's team on the red side and Trick 2G's army on the blue side are tied up at one in one on the week. One of them is going to be two and one. The other one's going to fall to one and two. And all well, that might affect your draft order if you vote for them on Omen.gg. Yeah, for sure. Always a good call to go over there and vote. Make sure to vote sooner rather than later as uh, the polls will close soon because we have that draft coming up on Monday. But enough about Omen.gg despite the fact that they're fantastic. They're Let's talk a little bit about this Jax jungle. Um, where do you think he's going to start and what do you think the best options are for him? It does look like him, uh, both Trick and RF Legendary are moving together. Do you think they're going to opt to start with that duo jungle strat or is RF Legendary going to head right to the top lane? This is something they did last game, but in the bottom side of the map, immediate flash from Zerbic. A flash stun from Matlife goes out, though. Another flash from Nightblue. I guess it's, I don't know, they're just flashing down there. A lot of stuff burned. Valkyrie has picked up at level 1 for Corky as well, so he's going to mosey himself out of there. Early level 1 invade from Nightblue's team on their red buff side. Like you said already, being countered out by Trick2G and Arf Legendary on the top side of the map, countering on Nightblue's red buff jungle. Now, Trick did wind up giving up a lot of his own jungle last game in the game against Cutie Pie's team, and he he sacrificed a little bit of experience for it, but he did wind up going into the enemy side of the map and doing a lot out with RF Legendary. Wouldn't be surprised to see the same kind of thing coming in here. It's actually, Moonway puts a ward down, is able to spot out here that Trick and RF are over here. The sun goes out, a burrow with a knockup as well. Moonway taking a lot of damage right here, down below half HP, saving his flash. He knows he doesn't have to use that to get out of there, walks in the turret shield. He's gonna recall. They see the pings are down. They're trying to steal away this red buff. Fishing for Earth actually coming up all by his lonesome. Strompus is over here. Arf, Legendary, and Trick are over here. Teleport coming back in from the side of Moonway. This red buff was down to 857 HP. Currently chasing after fishing for Earth. Looks like it's going to get knocked up again by RF Legendary. There's a lot of time being wasted here. Night Blue is already out there for his Grump and his blue buff. Looks like Trick is going to be able to take down that red buff for himself. He smites it and takes it away. Clears the camp out to hit his own level 2. And there was a lot of time being used in that situation. And all that came up of it was Trick 2G gets the enemy red buff. And once again, we see Nightblue going very, very low in the jungle. Uh, risky from him, but good news is, is that Jax is in no position to respond. Obviously, a ton of early game aggression coming out here. Uh, impressive. I'm glad Strompus feels comfortable enough on Azir to push deep into that jungle. Makes me hopeful for the rest of the game's play. It'll be interesting to see how this plays out for them. Bot lane, on the other hand, looking to play a little aggressive from Matt Life. Strong decision. Lots of cooldowns blown. Pretty much everyone flashing across the map. A lot of flashy early gameplay. Sorry, that was awful. Um, <laughs> I'm rubbing off on you. Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, I can't stop. The puns, they're just everywhere. I see them now. I understand, Freak. I understand. It's Top like lane. A whole, it's like a whole matrix of puns. <laughs> Top lane, actually, a little bit of aggression. Arf Legendary gets a quick little unburrowed knockup on the Moonway. The teleport was actually down already in that top lane. Moonway used it over to a ward as well, which means there's no reduced cooldown from using on a tower or any of those kinds of shenanigans. So that means that his teleport is down. Arf Legendary still has his own teleport and a slight CS advantage from just moseying over to lane a little bit quicker. Same thing we saw in the early stage of the lane for Strompus going up against Fishing for Earth in the mid side of the map, but that has been very quickly equaled out or leveled out a little bit more by Fishing for Earth, able to use those ice shards to just farm up the minions a little bit quicker than Azir's soldiers are going to be able to do. Nightblue makes a guest appearance in top lane, but RF Legend able to utilize those tunnels. Pharaoh's over the wall, and there's no gank you, sir, in that top lane. Rengar pick, once again, not doing as much early as uh, Nightblue would like it to do, but it'll be interesting to see how this transitions. Obviously, he didn't go down in the early game like he has in the past, so already a better start, but just matching Jax, we do see Trick 2G. Uh oh gank in the mid lane here. 
Mm -hmm. Gang goes off. Shrompus with the flashes away. The flash forward, though. Knife Blue is able to help pick up a kill right there. First Blood actually goes on over to Fishing for Earth in that circumstance. Bottom lane, we see a Matt Light being caught out right here by the Jungle Jack, but they trade one for one. Buffs disappear in that circumstance, though, because Matt Life with the Ignite was able to pick up the kill on trade. And in the mid lane, my big concern now is that with Lissandra ahead, Azir already has sort of this weak early game, relying on range to push him into that late game status where he can just do so much damage. So now Lissandra, who also similarly has that weak early game, going to be much stronger in this laning phase and looking to perform much better. All right, Legendary uses his teleport, gets down here, trying to disrupt Night Blue and fishing for Earth and stealing away the red buff, but Night Blue's already got that one. Our Legendary drop low, the burrowing tunnels come out. Night Blue coming in, tries to jump out, but the tornado knocks him up. Sicko's got their dropping extremely low, fishing for Earth dropping low as well. Zerbic's able to pick up a kill. Night Blue is still alive, but very, very low, barely breathing. I Uzi going to have to try to dash away from this one. Along came a mat like flash up the wall from Trick G and the Dragon, but he's wrapping around our Legendary drop low, but Night Blue's gonna get stunned up with that like kill picked up there for Trick. A kill over the wall as Grace goes down to the ignite coming up from Janna. Another kill picked up by Azir. Matt Life falls. It's 5 to 3 in the kills right now. And that was a 3 for 1 trade heavily in favor of Trick's team. And you can see how much better Trick UG performs when he has a champion with an ideal amount of mobility, when people can't just kite him with slows. And, you know, a little bit of sloppy play coming out from Night Blue's team, overextending into that team fight, not respecting RF Legendary's teleport in. But Moon Way in the top lane is going to get kind of get something off of this. But meanwhile, just, oh, such, such strong play and such a huge advantage to Trick UG in this early game. Two kills for Jax and one assist. Now, if you said Jax is... Zach, wow, sorry about that one. Jax is going to need some time to scale up into the later stages of this game and helping him get those kills early on to accelerate his jungle and get him that much needed gold is a great way to facilitate that one. RF Legendary wound up dying for his troubles in that fight, but did pick up four assists in the fray. So he goes back up the top lane. His teleport is going to be on cooldown, but at level six, he does, of course, have that ultimate from Rek'Sai. The Void Rush will be able to be used to go back and forth between that top lane and base. We've seen him use that quite a effectively in all of these other series so far this week at the Omen Encounter. Wouldn't be surprised to see him do it again. Bot side of the map, things have evened out a little bit here. 34 to 36 CS, 1, 0, and 3 for Corky coming out from Zerbic as it is 1, 1, and 1 for Graves on the bottom side of the map. See Trick running into a wild fishing for Earth, but on the back side, Strompus comes in with a couple of soldiers to poke and prod at that one. Night Blue's made his way down into this bottom side of the map. Don't know if the enemy team knows he's over there. There's no ward coverage, and there was a pink ward in the second brush. The way Wave is pushed up extremely far though, so we see how patient Night Blue can actually be here. Night Blue, of course, in a pretty good situation here, does have four stacks of ferocity, can easily jump in, throw a bola, and then throw the empowered bola, so he does have a lot of CC options combined with anti stun. Uh oh, aggressive play here. Yeah, Night Blue jumps out of the brush on the sickle scout, but his dual lane wasn't there. It takes a lot of pain and punishment for that one, dropping well below half HP, but so has Zerbic as I Uzi there, laying out the damage for that one. Matt Life as well with the anti abilities, just dealing a lot of damage on top of all of the bursts coming out from Graves as well. So, shields coming out from Janna trying to keep Corky alive. Mid lane, we see nothing all too much going on between Azir and Lissandra, but with the timer on the enemy red buff, Trick and RF are going to be going over to that side of the map once again, making a guest appearance at the enemy red buff. Trying to take this away for Trick himself. Does get the smite down from that. Ranger's Trailblazer picked up is going to give him a little bit more health and mana back up. 15% to be exact on that one. And a second red buff steal for Trick's side. Doesn't look like it's going to be all they're going to do though. Now the gank parade is coming down in the top lane. Winds up popping the counter strike but does not decide to leave after Moonlight into the enemy tower. So they just wind up making another appearance up there and falling back. The red buff steal is pretty huge there. I mean, it's really hard for Rengar to do a whole lot without that. He's also going to have to give up his blue to keep Lissandra. Uh, able to lane efficiently against this as the user pick. So Night Blue in a really bad spot here. We'll get level six soon though, and that may be when he tries to get retribution. However, with so few items and with so much pressure exerted on the map, it's gonna be interesting to see exactly where he opts to go. His best hope is probably to gank that mid lane with Lissandra, given that she has enough CC that the red buff isn't as necessary. That's very true. Once you hit level 6, the ability to actually lock somebody down is going to be very, very crucial on that Lissandra pickup. We'll see if that's what they wind up choosing to go for. it. Level 6 has been acquired for Rengar. Still only level 5 for Jax, and despite all those kills and some one extra CS in his favor, looks like Nightblue is the one that's been sapping away some experience to hit the level 6 burst first. 
where that first ultimate is going to be used. We'll have to keep our eyes peeled for. He has gone back to buy, completes his own Ranger's Trailblazer, picks up some boots for his shovel, swaps over to his sweeping ones on his Bone Tooth necklace, and has the pieces for that warrior upgrade. Trick in the meantime, has his Ranger's Trailblazer, but is opting to go for the Phage, rushing for that Trinity Force, much like a Jax would rather have. Well, you know, Forky getting the Trinity Force, no surprise, and Jax too looks like he's building that Trinity Force. One of the big things we see from Trick2G, regardless of what champion he's playing, is that he loves that early game Phage. He's a huge fan of that item, and he often delays the finishing the jungle item just to get it. You do see Rangar on the opposite side opting for those double long swords. Probably going to go for that Brutalizer and that eventual upgrade for his jungle item enchantment. Lots of armor pen coming out from the enemy side, and we do see fishing for Earth once again going for Merilla and Amicon. Not as good because there's not as much healing on the team, but it's still excellent because of the amount of cooldown reduction it gives him. Merle Nomicon is just basically like the one of the quintessential AP mid items right now. Lots of AP, lots of cooldown reduction, mono regeneration. What's to hate about the item? The Night Blue coming in the top lane here. Flash and the Bola comes out. Arf Legendary with the knockup has to flash away. Flash coming in from Moonway. Boomerang goes out. Night Blue with the last hit right there. Textbook gang from Rengar. Yeah, using the flash there as well, using two empowered Ebola is one of the best things about those empowered abilities is that as long as you have five fury, it doesn't, or five, sorry, five ferocity, it doesn't matter how many times you cast them, there is no cooldown. So you just got to get that back up and you can chain as many of those as possible, assuming you've got the ferocity to cast them. Top lane gank executed very well. Gnar looking to get ahead. We see the Brutalizer early. Do you think Gnar is going to opt for that tanky build that we see so much or will he swap into something AD oriented? Well, he's going to have a Rek'Sai zipping by him right now, so he's going to walk the other direction. Has the leap available. Doesn't look like he's going to be pressured all too much from this one. Arf Legendary does burrow over the wall, but there's the leap for Moonway to get himself out of there. Brutalizer being built first. A little bit of damage there for the Gnar, but I wouldn't be surprised to see him going for a bit more tanky style build. Especially because Rengar looks like with the Warrior enchantment. We'll see if he wants it going damage as well. If you wind up getting two damage based top, uh, top laner and jungler, you have no tank. You're going to be in for a bad kind of situation here. He has acquired the Giant's Belt. Gnar, that is. So, probably going to be going for a bit tanky here. Wouldn't be surprised to see Brandon and Zomen, Sunfire Cave. Stuff along the lines of that. Yeah, and despite the fact that Azir can dish out enough AP damage in the mid to late game to, to justify magic resist on his own, it's going to be really hard for them to, or hard for Trick 2G's team to win a fight if the enemy team has too much armor stacked up until they get into that late game, just because they are very AD dependent. The one advantage that they do have is Quirky, obviously, offers a lot of magic damage, and Jax, to a certain degree, has that hybrid damage, which is so important. Scuttle Crab Control being secured by Night Blue over by the Dragon area. Dragon is live on the map this time around. Let's not forget here, there is already one Dragon buff accrued by the Trick 2G army. They were able to pick that one up early on after that big tussle by their own red buff went down. Teleport actually coming in over here from Moonway. Arf Legendary has made his way down into this lane, or lane area already with his own teleport. And it looks like this might be a fight getting a Bruin here. Trick is going to take some poke damage coming out from I Uzi. The positioning from Night Blue's team is in favor of them to try to go for this dragon, but there's a lot of damage coming out from Strompus. The soldiers over the wall poking Mat Life down to below half HP. Night Blue putting down a pink ward, trying to clear out the dragon vision for his own team. Tensions are high. The poke coming out here from Rek'Sai, getting the dragon to kind of take flight, knock back Night Blue's team. They do not want to take that cone AoE damage from the dragon unless they absolutely have to. Flash forward from Mat Life. The Timbers comes out. The stun on the Strompus, but in comes the Emperor's Divide. Flash over the wall there from this bird. The two goes down on the Strompus, but Trick to G's going against blown up. Arp Legendary goes and takes the kill on Night Blue, but Nar picks the kill on RF. Azir goes down. The Emperor has fallen. Sick of Scott's going to be the next target. The shield goes on, but he goes down. Lissandra picks up another kill in this fray, and that is going to be a four for one in favor of Night Blue and the red team. Yeah, and despite Trick 2G's team coming in with a little bit of an advantage there, and, you know, and disengaging pretty well between the Azir and the Janna, there's just too much base damage, and the strength and the power spikes are all on the side of Night Blue's team. Cassandra, of course, very strong here. Moonway, incredibly, incredibly strong on that Gnar. Did manage to get Mega Gnar in that fight, something that they probably didn't take into account, and I am Matt Life taking full advantage of that CC, and despite standing in the front, that whole entire fight did not go down. Yeah, we did see Zerbic trying to get a little bit cheeky and steal away that dragon, but to no success, has to flash out of that one. One kill, or one dragon kill a piece now for these teams. So both have that 6% AD and AP, but it is Night Blue's team who actually have a slight gold advantage. Just under 2k in their favor. 
eight kills compared to six. They had the tower advantage, but with Trick 2G and his army grouping up towards this mid lane over here, it is going to be Azir taking down that mid lane tower, putting the gold count more to like a 1k gold advantage right now. Trick 2G over on Night Blue side of the jungle. This is the third time in the row he's stealing away or stolen away. Night Blue's red buff. Matt Life came in trying to poke his head around, but he wound up fighting an Azir. A flash and a jump forward from Trick. He's going to wind up picking up a kill. 3 2 and 1 now for this jungle jack. Jungle Jack's pick looking really strong. You know, we were, weren't were sure exactly how it was going to work out, but it seems to be working quite well. Trick 2G obviously rushing that uh, <laughs> Triforce there has a bits and pieces, but with any luck as he continues to get more gold and he continues to clear his jungle, once he finishes that Triforce, uh-oh. Bola goes on onto RF Legendary. He winds up going underground, but not the way you think Rek'Sai would do so. He winds up dying in that exchange. That's another death for him. One, four, and five in this game. Nightblitz really put a lot of pressure in that top lane on them, too. This is the third or fourth repeat gank onto RF. And I think that's an excellent decision. You saw RF in the past game. Despite Trick 2G's um, team not performing quite so well, RF Legendary had absolute control of that top side with Rek'Sai, and so now Nightblue coming in, not letting him get those tunnels, not let him set up a, a base camp in that top lane, so not only reducing RF Legendary's gold count and his effectiveness in team fights, but also his map mobility by taking out those tunnels. Vision for Earth now getting jumped on by Trick. Stromp is coming in as well. The Soldier goes to where the Ice Path was. And actually, Trick is the one who picks up the kill right there. Another one into the repertoire of Jax. Four, two, and one on Jungle Jax. This one's definitely working out a lot better than the Avala Bear was for Trick in the previous game. Well, it's kind of... The Avala Bear was really lackluster in that game. And I think a lot of that is due to the fact that Avala Bear, while surprising and a lot of people aren't used to playing against him, when you play against so many challenger players, they're not surprised by the sudden tankiness, and they're not not afraid to try to kite a bullet barrel away. But this pick obviously looking out very well. Uh, the bot lane's looking kind of rough for them at this point. I Uzi doing it extremely well, but I am Matt Life dying a lot more than on his signature Thresh pick. Yeah, not going for the tanky kind of champions. I mean, Thresh can build tanky. His Blitzcrank is obviously a very tanky uh, champion just in this kit and in the statistics it brings to the table. Annie, he's more about blowing up the enemy and catching them out with the sun rather than like taking enough damage too. So he's going into these situations, flashing and getting the timber stone, going over the Emperor's Divide, and he's paying the price for it because he's just not as tanky as he's used to playing on some of those other characters. Night Blue in the meantime wasn't his bottom lane. Pops the ultimate, does get the jump down onto Zerbic. The Bolo goes out, not going to want to get the stun. The Zerbic does get the Valkyrie away. Matt Life had the stun charge, and they were playing quite passive there from Quirky and Janna's side. I'm not sure, can, can the enemy team hear the sound of Rengar going into his ultimate? Because, I mean, that was a very good guess if they could not, because they did, instantly decided to go back. Um, maybe they just noticed I am Matt Life and I Uzi suddenly playing significantly less aggressive, but very, very good read from Zerbic and Sicko Scott to back off there. All very close to being a lethal gank with I am Matt Life stun, it would have been almost a guaranteed kill, if not two. No, and we did actually have a ward in the tri brush here. Spotting out Trick, and actually Nightblue's gonna find it because of it too. Jax has a decent amount of kills and items, but he's still not super tanky. Late game Jax monster, he wants to be fishing for Earth with the roam down. Picks up a kill over there. Smoke screen actually added an assist from Graves in the bottom lane too, so just getting some extra assist gold on that kill. Very, very nice for Nightblue's team. Nightblue's team still looking like they have, you know, kind of control of this map playing very forward. Obviously shutting down that Rek'Sai, he's having trouble split pushing this top lane and full aggression here. <laughs> Goodbye, Sicko Scotty. I'm blowing up on some collateral damage right there coming out from Graves. Matt Life now taking some token frame from him from Zerbic. The teleport coming in from Moonway. Night Blue's coming out the backside as well. It's four man party in the bot lane. This tower is going to go down just as quick as Corky did right here. Two kills and a tower for the price of nothing. Yeah, and Moonway coming in with that teleport and Goomba stomping him for that assist. And, you know, this is really, really smart play. They know that RF Legendary is going to try to push with the top lane, so they send Fishing for Earth up there to stop him, but they commit the rest of their members, the ones who are good at pushing turrets, down to this bot lane. Oh, that the teleport gets denied, and Trick goes in still. A killing spree picked up now for Moonway. Strop is trying to reconcile with RF Legendary in the mid lane. Flash forward, the knockup coming out from RF Legendary. Matlock does get the stun, though. The Emperor goes forward. Strop is trying to get as much damage down as possible. RF Legendary is the one who picks up the kill on Matlock life there but now fishing for earth on the backside night blue and moonway coming in from the front side what's gonna happen here it's a trick team sandwich moonway actually 
Cohen trying to go forward, Fishing Earth does get knocked up by the Emperor's Divide, a flash and an Ice Path over, they decide to go to the path of Night Blue. They pick up a kill over there as Sicko Scott joins the fray, he actually is the one who picks it up right there, and a really good escape and a nice exit frag there from the side of Trick's army. And one thing to take into account there, that Night Blue used his ultimate right as he died, and unfortunately the nature of Rangar's ultimate means that the cooldown was burned despite the fact that it gained him absolutely no advantage, so it's going to be tough for him at this point, especially given that he only has 20% cooldown reduction at this point in the game. Uh, excluding, of course, runes and masteries, depending on what he decided to run. So, rough spot for them to be. This is a really back and forth game. Uh, it looks like he might make it to the late game. Who do you expect to have the advantage? Uh, I'm gonna go with that Other guy. Than I, Uzi. Yeah, that was a little absurd there. That Graves Burst is so strong, and I think that's part of the reason why he's such a popular pick right now, is despite the fact that full AD itemization kind of saw a nerf with the changes to the Bloodthirster oh so long ago. Uh, you know, Graves still has so much burst and so much damage that he didn't even need it. It doesn't even seem to have negatively affected him at all after all these AD carry nerfs. Well, they lost the Azir, but they pick up a dragon in that trade, so not necessarily the worst thing in the world for Trick's team. That's the second dragon, and probably the most important for his team, the extra damage to towers and buildings by 15% to be exact. So that's going to be an additional bonus if Trick decides to start his split pushing ways. He's already gotten the Trinity Force, so all he needs is a little bit of tankiness, and Jax is going to be well on his way to being a late game beast. The mid lane tower, though, did go down in favor of Night Blue Squad. They have five towers compared to two. The gold count is in their favor. It is 35. 5.2k compared to 31.6k, 14 kills compared to 10. The kill count's a little bit closer and the gold count's telling this story. The Trick's team, they're gonna start needing to try to push some of those waves out, get those towers, because that's the kind of gold they need to get to even things up in this circumstance. Night Blue's team just has too much global gold off those towers. The global gold is coming huge here, and obviously Night Blue's starting to look better and better on this Rangar pick as the game is transitioned. The Gnar pick also coming in strong. They just have so much team fight control with this Gnar and this Lissandra that it's it's going to be so hard. Strong, it's really on Strompus and Sicko Scott to disengage these fights because if they can't, that Gnar CC and that Lissandra CC is going to keep the whole team locked down. I didn't even take into account the tippers from Annie. <laughs> That's a pretty big one too, and you drop a giant stun bear on their head, it's going to be very, very hard to deal with here. We'll have to see Night Blue actually popping his ultimate, does see that RF Legendary and Sika Scott are off to the side. Moonway is there as well, fishing for Earth too. RF Legendary is going to be the one they decide to jump on right here. Night Blue though getting absolutely lit up from RF Legendary. Over the wall he goes, up fishing for Earth is there. Matt Life is the one that secures the kill. Mid lane, I Uzi going to get knocked up. The Emperor's Divide goes out and a shutdown three over the Strompeth. Double buff on Azir, working wonders right there. Picks up a kill on the formerly 5-1 and 5 Graves, now 5-2 and 5. Best Azir and A says Strompeth. Yeah. Strompus looking pretty good there. The Azir damage is starting to get bigger and bigger as this game goes on. Of course, cooldown reduction giving him multiple stats, not just the CDR, but also attack speed for those Sand Soldiers. So, Fishing for Earth going to go down here to the Zerbic and Sicko Scott play. Just, just a bloodbath. Optimus Tom. It's it's not even I don't even feel like anyone's making clear plays. I feel like one guy gets a kill, someone overextends, another guy gets a kill. It's absolute chaos. Well at the exact same time we see Trick 2G in this bottom lane here trying to take down that bottom tier two tower. The gate's going to be closed for now by Night Blues. He shows up to the party and decides to force Trick away. But he is going to run and uh, he'll probably fight another day. Azir Tower in the mid lane goes up and the siege is actually gonna start right here. Double bluffs for Azir and double bluffs for Porky. That's a lot of poke and a lot of sustain in the monitor department that they're going to have to try to burn through on the side of Night Blue's team. Yeah, and with that Azir Tower there, it's going to be really hard for Night Blue's team to get the engage that they want in this situation. Of course, Rengar pretty much committed to bot lane to stop this Jack split push, and we saw Trick G spamming laugh earlier. Clearly is not afraid, despite the lack of mana, although he may get an engage on here. Nope, back in time. Yeah, just going to wind up backing away from that one. I'm going to continue our focus in this mid lane here as Annie from that life getting poked down by the soldiers coming out from Azir. That extra range on those auto attacks with the soldiers, very, very hard thing to try to deal with in lane. Even harder to deal with when you're just stuck underneath your own tower. Matt Life is actually going to wind up being forced back from that situation. When the Azir tower expires, though, and Graves is the one to take it down, they decide to back away right here. Plus the the buffs, wow. The double buffs from both Azir and Quirky have been starting to fade, so once that tower goes down, they don't have the safety to kind of fall back and pressure off and continue the siege anymore. So they're going to back away from this one entirely. Dragon, not going to be on the map for quite some time. We're going to see here, once again, the Vision War is going to come into play. Who can put the wards down, who can get the picks, and that's going to be who decides the next move in this game. And despite the focus on vision control from what it would seem like both teams, Trick2G seems to have a different focus, opting to pick up that elixir. Tom, which elixir is that? 
which player picked up the elixir? Are you saying it's a uh, trick? Trick has not picked up an elixir, actually. That's actually surprising. He's used. Oh, he's picked up one. Hasn't used it yet. The elixir of ruin. This is what he's going to do to try to open D gates. He's going to wind up going up, getting the extra damage down to towers. This is why those dragon buffs are very, very, very crucial for Trick's team. Getting the extra 15% damage to towers and buildings on top of being able to deal 15% more bonus damage to that with the elixir means that those towers are going to fall quicker than you can say fate falls. Fate falls. He's not right, there yet. Give it, give it some time. He's not there yet. I'm a little disappointed, and I'm not going to lie, but. I, I, I see your point there. That elixir obviously coming in very strong. Had to pass it over to you because I didn't have my mouse at the time. Couldn't scroll over to read it for myself. So thanks for the cover there. And, uh, you know, with Trick G providing so much split pressure on this Jax, Jax obviously a very proficient duelist. And if Night Blue is the one that they send to fight him, or Graves, or even Gnar, they're going to have a really hard time. That Counter Strike is going to play a huge part. And obviously, Trick G is going to get a lot of temporary stats from that elixir, but he is being patient with it, not pulling the trigger yet, not using that until he knows he can get into tower range and do some damage. Yeah, he doesn't want to activate it until he can absolutely get to the tower and start to take it down. That bottom lane tower has actually been well done by Jax already. The sweet, sweet sound of Jax hitting a tower has taken it down to 814 HP already. So once he gets a couple mini waves up there, he may be able to brute force that one down with the elixir in his inventory. The rest of his team in the meantime have been trying to fight a vision war but it looks like they might not be on the best side of those things. Pink Wards in Night Blue's red side jungle have denied them any forward pressure over by the Baron Pit, and at the exact same time, the dance around the Dragon Pit area, there's a, another Pink Ward over there for Night Blue's team. More forward wards into Trick 2G's blue buff area. The Dragon is now spawning, and Trick's team is completely blind to where Night Blue's team is on the map. They can't really get together and try to contest this one. RF is in top lane, has his teleport, as does Moonwife, but the Dragon has already been started by Night Blue's squad. 2k HP has fallen lower and lower and lower. Quirky trying to poke that one out, but no one is there to contest that one. The pushing power has been all but evened up on both of these teams, and it is now two Dragon Buffs compared to two. And two to two on Dragon Buffs means that both teams are going to be even in that universal goal advantage. It'll be interesting to see who gets the third one at this point. That movement speed is going to come in huge, especially for Trick 2G and RF Legendary, both of whom seem to be eager to split push. The rest of the team staying as a pretty unified core, having a lot of disengage options. It's a pretty good 1-3-1 one, one split push option for them, just because obviously Trick 2G and RF Legendary are so mobile that they can get away, and then the other less mobile characters have so many disengage options. And well, Graves does a lot of damage. Graves does a ton of damage right there. Blows up Stromp. Is getting revenge for that best Azir and A kind of comment before. Zerbic has actually picked up an elixir for himself. It, as it looks like he's gotten a little bit larger right here. But they are going to wind up going back and forth with some trades here. Moonway now coming in. Gets the jump. Gets the stun. Gets the slow. Zerbic taking a lot of damage. The stun comes out once again from Andy. The lockdown from Lissandra. You can't even Valkyrie away from that when he goes down at the exact same time. I Uzi tanks some tower shots. And it looks like the pause might be to the fact that he shouldn't be standing there not moving at all so much cc you got a dc to believe it we're gonna wait for uh this to catch up or for i don't know i didn't i didn't see in the chat was exactly what's happening but i'm gonna assume someone's having some connection issues so while we wait for this to happen we're you know we're kind of starting to hit that mid game approaching late game point almost 30 minutes now we do see azir has the majority of his core for items hasn't finished boots yet, but it's looking like he's going to do a lot of damage. How do you expect these team fights to go now that we're approaching late game? Uh, well, currently, based off of that last team fight, I expect Azir and Corky to get CC'd for absolutely uh, ever and a half. So um, I'm expecting these team fights are not necessarily going to go the way that Trick's army really wants them to. The amount of CC, the AOE CC coming out from the team is killer. And as we saw, Trick's kind of go-to strategy as he's here in the bottom lane is to open the gates and he wants to split push. He wants to not be in the vicinity of all of that AOE lockup. So he's trading tier two tower for tier two tower, but Night Blue's team, while Trick's team is trying to group up and go for these vision wars and maybe kind of stall out for these dragons and stuff, they're picking up kills. And the kills are slowly but surely going to amount into a gold lead that Night Blue's team is just going to outclass Trick's army with. But Trick here, unafraid of the Gnar with no transformation and no uh, no real ability to hurt him, goes in for the tower, but he pays the iron price as I Uzi wraps around this side and picks up yet another kill, the seventh of the game for Graves. And of course that Elixir of Ruin being popped there, coming in so strong between the Dragon buff to tower damage and that Elixir buff to tower damage, he was able to ignore all of Nar's damage in mini Nar form, had to run away, but was Oom at that point, so 
you know, getting the turret and trading his life for the turret, not a bad trade at all. They did have to give up a mid lane turret as well, so maybe not ideal, but with that turret down, they now have to be very cautious about wind trick GG split pushes, and if our legendary puts a tunnel over there, they're gonna be able to snag that inhibitor anytime they want or anytime Night Blue's team tries to commit to an objective. Oh, Zero is caught. Use the Emperor's Divide already. Nightblue tries to go into RF Legendary. He's getting taken down extremely low. The fly should come out. Strompus comes back in. Fishing for Earth goes down, but so does RF Legendary. Strompus now stuck between the entire enemy team. He winds up going down on top of that one. That's going to be another kill picked up for I Uzi. Graze picking up his eighth kill of the game in that exchange. It's a two for the price of one. And it looks like that Night Blue's team is going to try commanding some air, some control of the Baron area. But while this is going on, Trick's team has grouped up as a force of the remaining three. And they're trying to put pressure down on this mid lane. Looks like a little bit of a uh, little bit of uncertainty from Night Blue's team. They're starting some recalls to side not to. I Uzi going to continue pushing down this spot, uh, sorry, top tier two tower. That one goes down, but they're going to trade it for an inhibitor tower. The inhibitor is now being focused on. Nari has his transformation on already. That's going to want to go into mini Nari as this fight breaks out. I am Matt Life trying to get some damage on, but it's going to be tricked and killing him on the back line. Zerbic dealing some damage on the Night Blue, but mini Nari joins the fray, but he's not got any CC in that form. The inhibitor goes down. Mininar trying to chase at the boomerangs. Looks like they're going to wind up hitting on the trick. He's going to get slowed. He jumps over to Zervik. Teleport canceled out here by RF Legendary. He's actually going to wind up trying to go down to Graze as he gets an inhibitor tower knocked down for his problems here. RF Legendary trying to chase after. The burrow goes down. Flash away from I Uzi. In comes Azir. They're going to try to chase on the Graze. He dashes over a wall. Scrying Orb being used. In the meantime, on bottom lane, the chase has not stopped over there either. Zervik trying to juke and drive away. Gets away from Moonway. Fishing for Earth coming in. Knife with the ultimate around the side. Is he going to go? To Zervik is going to go on the trick. Trick goes back in, gets the stun down, but he sacrifices himself. Zervik once again getting blown up by Night Blue at the same exact time. I Uzi in the top lane finally gets away from RF Legendary, and Strompus returns to the mid lane, fishing for Earth and Moonway, trying to chase down onto Sicko Scott. But they are going to decide that the chase is not worth enough. Lots of kills going down across the map. An inhibitor goes down for Trick's team. Towers go down for Night Blue's team, and I am officially out of breath. I can't blame you there. So much action on both sides of the map. No 5v5 team fights as we've seen them. A lot of 2v2s, a lot of 3v3s. In that case, gotta say, excellent map movement from Night Blue. Really smart player. Rotated down to that bot lane. Maybe Trick 2 didn't see it. Went in full force on the Gnar and the Lissandra. Trying to stop them so the teammates could get away. But at that point, Corky was already gone. You know, that, that Rengar pick doing a ton of damage and in a 1v1 situation. Still able to do that Corky. Despite the fact that Corky has superior items. That Baron now coming out. What does this mean for Trick 2G's team? How are they going to use this? Well, they're going to use it to push lanes. That's normally what you want to do if you're Trick's team, and it's what you're going to have a lot of doing when you have the Baron buff. Going to be buffing all the minions you're standing nearby. It looks like they don't even need Trick to have that one just because of the positioning. They've kind of strewn everybody all throughout the different parts of the map. Baron buff looks like it's gone down onto absolutely everybody from Trick's team as well. So getting the respawns, getting the perfect timing on that one. So there are five members strong with this Baron buff. Once again, don't forget there are three dragon buffs. And, I'm sorry, two dragon buffs on the side of Trick's team and two dragon buffs on the side of Night Blue's team. So the third one with movement speed could be crucial. 35 seconds till that one is up. Everybody from Night Blue's team is away in the top lane, and Trick is down in the bot lane doing his split push Trick 2G thing. With 20 seconds left on the Dragon Timer, that could mean Trick could go for that one by himself, or he could just go for this open inhibitor in the bot lane. The rest of the team is trying to get into a scrappy engagement. They want to, you know what you want to do? You want to stop the ports, boys. They're going to wind up going in here. Matt Life tries to flash in, gets a Timber Stun down on the Strompus. Emperor's Divide goes out, but Strompus goes down. Moonway now taking a lot of damage in the front of the fray. He's got an almost full Rage Bar. Could transform at any given second right now. Decides to back away. They wind up trading one for none in favor of Night Blue's team. We do have Trick going up against Fate Falls on Fishing for Earth in the bottom lane. That inhibitor taking a little bit of damage from Trick, but not all too much as he does have the Lissandra to have to uh, contend with in this circumstance. The ultimate is up for Lissandra, so he could go for that one. Ping's going down. A recall has been started by Night Blue. Looks like a teleport's coming in from Nar as well. Mumei's gonna come in try to stop this one. Trick, is he gonna get the inhibitor? He does! The gate is open in bottom lane. Top lane tier 2 tower goes down at the exact same time. Trick trying to jump and get away, but he will pay for his with his life for this one. I guess you could say the iron price with the elixir of iron taking away on that one for him, but two inhibitors are now down in Night Blue's base, and Trick's army also gets the outer tower top lane.
Yeah, tag me in, coach. You've, you've worked hard. You worked, you deserve a break there. So much action going in. Once again, that second hit for going down is going to mean free dragon here for Trick 2G team. Exactly what they wanted. More movement speed, easier map movement, and of course, RF Legendary has absolute tunnel control on the top side of that map. Going to be able to alt up there whenever he wants to push that last tower down. So, at this point, Night Blue's team has to play very cautious and is pretty much forced on the back foot until those inhibitors respawn. Really needs to be careful about these tunnels. Night Blue going aggressive there. Wondering if this is the right choice for him to burn that all, then it looks like he's not going to get anything from it. Well, third dragon we did see being taken by Trick's team. That means they get the extra movement speed bonus on top of, well, the Baron buff should be winding down in just a couple of seconds if it's not gone already. Just a few seconds left on that one, so the pushing from the minions not going to be on their side, but with two inhibitors down and extra buffs on their side, could potentially see things swinging in their favor. But the thing is here, they're still down. In towers. I mean, technically, because the Azir towers are counting and they're giving gold away at the same exact time, which is why you see 11 to 8 on the spectator overlay when you know there's only 11 towers on the map. So technically, it's only 7 compared to 8 that are down on the side of Night Blue's team. But the gold counts from coming from those Azir towers, the gold counts coming from the fact they have 24 compared to 14 kills, are giving Night Blue's team still basically a Four and a half thousand gold advantage. It's 61.5 compared to 56.9k gold. So this inhibitor in the mid lane has respawned. The bottom one is what they have to worry about. When Baron's still not going to be on the map for over two minutes, that bottom lane pressure isn't necessarily going to drive them away from a big objective like it normally is. Yeah, and they gotta be really careful here. Moonway definitely trying to pick up Trick 2G kill here. Everyone on the top side trying to avoid that hard engage coming out from Night Blue's team and Meganar. Not quite able to pick up the kill on Trick 2G. Lissandra forced to flash out of that fight in the top side lane. Fights happening everywhere. Meanwhile, on the bot lane, Nar looking to be gonna try to help his team in that top lane engage Trick 2G. Not a fan of that. <laughs> He's getting gnarred right against the wall right there. A lot of damage coming out from that. Trick now trying to run away, but Moonway, oh, he burns the flash right there from Trick. Moonway continuing to chase, does not have his teleport available, so he can't join the top lane fray here. That's going to mean it's still a 4v4 up here. Blue team against red team, trying to defend against the top lane inhibitor tower. Fishing for Earth, going to ice pass himself in, getting lit up by those soldiers. Strumpus as well as the Corgi Rocket, just eviscerating fate in that one. And this is the late game that Strumpus was waiting for. He's at the point where pretty much every one of those Sand Soldier auto attacks is like an, a late game AD carry auto attack. Except he can have up to three out at a time and just does so much damage. Maybe more than three. But usually three and just doing so well here. Providing so much damage for the team. And now it doesn't even matter if they burn all their cooldowns on Corky because Azir will do enough damage to carry a fight. Well, what we said in Champions Select, like late game Azir is going to be dishing out a lot of damage. Death Cap, Morello, Void Staff, he's there already. At the same exact time, Captain Trick is pushing away in the mid lane, trying to get this inhibitor down. The counter strike goes out, stun on the moon lane. Rengar runs it jumping in at the same time here. Down to half HP, Ghostblade was popped, counter strike and random ones pop once again. This top lane tower is getting siege upon collateral damage goes out, but the monsoon from John is healing up the rest of Trick's team. RF Legendary goes in, RF Legendary flashes out. The Empress Divide is over there trying to stop him from going in, but I Uzi picks up the kill. In the meantime, a duel of the junglers on the mid side of the map. Night Blue and Trick locked in the battle of fate. Looks like Trick's gonna have to jump away from that one. Night Blue did get the heal off the W. Now the rest of the army is coming in from Night Blue's side. Flash forward, the Bolo winds up missing there from Night Blue. Trick is laughing in the face of danger, jumps away to some of his minions. The rest of the team still chasing down on this mid lane. It looks like everybody else from Trick's team has recalled and backed away, and they will live to fight another day. And Trick 2G split pushing with that Jax is so strong. You saw them commit two AD-based champions to try to kill him. However, it doesn't matter because in that three seconds of counter strike, he gained his teammates enough time to take down that top side tower. And now all of the inhibs are open with the inhib in the bot lane down. And this is going to be almost impossible for Night Blue's team to come back. They really need at this point that five-man kill, that ace, and they need to get a few inhibs of their own at this point. Well, they got their 12th tower of the game, Kappa, as they're able to pick up yet another Azir tower, self-destructing itself, that had been set up during the siege of the top lane inhibitor. Bottom lane inhibitor is still down. The mid lane one took a little bit of pain and punishment from Trick, but it has not actually gone down. Now the bottom one is actually going to be respawning at the exact same time that Baron is going to be up. So the decision making for the next couple seconds is going to be crucial. Sicko Scott probably didn't want to decide to die in that situation, especially with Baron being up on the map and the inhibitor respawning. Well, with the Zier doing just so much damage, they can still might be able to try to three-man this. And of course, Trick 2G, no surprise, down there in that bot lane, looking to split push open one of those inhibitors. At this point, it'll be interesting to see what they do. 
Oh, well, they're gonna jump on the Strompus and blow him up. The Emperor's Divide comes out, but it doesn't matter because the damage is dealt. Pings are going down. They've seen Trick. The port, the recalls are coming out here. No one's there to actually stop them. Trick's gonna wind up going for this inhibitor, but Matt Life is back. Looks like now Night Blue is back as well. Trick trying to get some damage and has to pop the Counter Strike and run away. While this is going on, fishing for Earth and I Uzi sieging down on the mid lane. Moonway is joining them now that the minions have gotten there. This could be an inhibitor tower going down for the side of Night Blue's team. That would open up mid lane and top arc. Legendary actually goes in, dealing a lot of damage. Jason for Earth tries to lock him up. Moonway gonna drop down really, really low, but it's RF that falls first. Zerbic now trying to get out here. Uses the QSS he's picked up on the last bat. One more round hit sails a deal for fishing for Earth. It's a one for one trade. I Uzi and Moonway dropping down super, super low. Meanwhile, Trick has somehow cheeked out both Matt Light and our and Night Blue here, trying to get this inhibitor down as quickly as possible. The Bola Strike comes out. He's going to wind up getting a root down on the Trick, but Trick's going to get the inhibitor. Now he's running into the enemies. Nexus Tower is not where you want to be. I Uzi picks up a kill on Sicko Scott at the same time as the chase went down in mid lane. Now it looks like Trick 2G trying able to jump away. Night Blue pops the ultimate. Is he going to be able to get the jump on him? He does after the counter strike goes down. Moonway joins the fray and Matt Weiss the one that picks up a kill on Trick 2G. Three dead on Trick's side, one dead on the side of Night Blue. Baron is an objective. Dragon is an objective. And there's a lot of stuff still on the map to take. I Uzi's life might be one of them. Moonway comes in, pops Ghost Blade, jumps into Stromp. It's Berserk is there as well, taken down well below half HP. Matt Life shows up to the fray and they decide to back away for now. Night Blue comes in. They throw down a pink ward. Don't want Rengar popping the ultimate. However, his ultimate's already been used to kill Trick. Everybody backs away. And man, there's a lot of action going down now. 46 kills in total. More than one a minute. Well, the big the big thing here is that despite the fact that more gold was actually earned on Night Blue's side, that open inhibitor provides so much map pressure for Trick 2G's team and just excellent play coming out from Trick 2G to split push that in. I don't know how he juked Night Blue, but he did a good job doing it. And despite going down, he did manage to get his team something. So even though they lost out on that trade, uh, in terms of gold, they won out in terms of map pressure, which I think is the more important part. As we get this late into the game, both teams having more than 60,000 gold on their lineup. And now Trick 2G's team, is that the fourth dragon buff? It is indeed. So just getting easier and easier for their team to push down these lands and to pressure those uh, open inhibitors. Fourth Dragon means the extra pushing power against minions. If the Baron were to go on Trick's team's hands as well, then they pretty much have all the tools they need to start the siege. Every single inhibitor on Night Blue's side is left open and the bottom one is down. Trick's army still has a remaining bastion of defense in the bottom lane, but two inhibitors are available for them to be sieged upon in the top and middle lane respectively. Without very many towers to fall back on, there's only one thing that Trick has to do. We just take down the inhibitor, let those super minions start flooding in, and his team can position for that Baron. If Night Blue's team reacts by sending too many people to deal with Trick, they're not going to be able to contest the Baron. And guess what? This is going on right now. See if a Trick's away in top lane. The Baron is going down from the rest of Trick's team. Night Blue, though, he's already here. He jumps in. He can't smite it. He doesn't use smite. He goes down. Corky picks up the kill. Trick is leading the rest of Night Blue's team on a journey throughout the rest of his base. Baron buff goes down in favor of Trick's team. RF Legendary teleports in. Moonway jumped in already. Fishing for Earth goes in. Gets this, uh, the freezing ring down on the Honda Trick. Flashes went over the wall. RF Legendary going a flash and a knockup. Fishing for Earth uses the Ice Tomb on himself. I Uzi picks up a kill on the other side as Trick tries to get away. Zanya's Hourglass now for Fishing for Earth. The boss response comes out. There's another kill. Sicko Scott getting hit up. RF Legendary as well dropping very low. Sicko Scott dies in the duel to supports but Zerbrick comes in for a double kill. Off to the side in comes Strompus. RF Legendary trying to get the knockup onto Moonway. He jumps away but he's in the face of an Azir Tower. Now it's going down onto Moonway. The Emperor's Divide comes out. Not going to be enough to kill him. I Uzi back actually at the same exact time it's three compared to two and one of them is really low and night blue's team one more inhibitor goes down trick team setting the sights on the last inhibitor three inhibitors a baron buff four dragon bloods tricks team in a commanding position with a 4k gold deficit and at this point trick 2g's team looks like they're poised to end the game we talked earlier about how that gold advantage wouldn't play quite as well as the map pressure advantage. Obviously with three inhibitor turrets down and Baron buff still available, they'll pretty much be able to march down those lanes as five. And just with the power, the Baron buff empowered minions be able to take those turrets. So just really, really excellent play from Trick 2G. Yes, I can say that word more. And RF Legendary now applying pressure to the top end. Night Blue focusing down here, probably a mistake, despite the fact that he does get a lot of good damage and RF Legendary is able to apply so much pressure in that top lane. Uh, I don't think that kill matters too much, Tom. How do you feel about Strompus going down? 
Oh, strongest fell. So he's now four, eight, and zero. Four, eight, and seven. Another kill goes over to the side of I Uzi. 13, 2, and 8 on Graves. Very impressive stuff from this. Actually, RF Legendary uses the tunnel. Night Blue caught shopping in this one. Gets knocked out of his recall. RF Legendary gonna burrow under again. Has a Guardian Angel, so he can try to distract or do whatever he wants in this fight here. In comes Fishing for Earth Zone. RF Legendary is going to wind up backing away from that one. He has a QSS Guardian Angel Thorn Mail. Super, super tanky here from Rek'Sai, but he has, more importantly, the ability to cleanse out of one of those stuns coming in from those champions on Night Blue's side. Now, in comes the rest of Trick's army. They are down an Emperor, but Trick is the general leading the charge under the Rift in this one. Three inhibitors are down, and like you said, as many kills as they might have picked up on Night Blue's side, doesn't really matter unless they kill the minions attacking their Nexus at this point. Yeah, and are they going to have the damage to do it? As long as they commit one champion to each of these lanes, every single one of those minions is going to be empowered. They do pick up this just respawn inhibitor easily. Of course, Night Blue's team not able to respond in any way, shape, or form. Oh, the jump on RF Legendary is tanking the Nexus Tower here. Has the Angel. QSS is away from this one, but he is going to get the GA popped on the bottom side of the map. Trick's team, what can they do? They're fighting IUZ. Everybody else going on to RF Legendary. IUZ goes down. RF Legendary still alive, fighting with Night Blue. Night Blue picks up a kill from that one. The Tibber Stun goes out. Looks like Zerbic was taking the brunt of the damage from that one. Fishing for Earth. I just passed in. The jump in from Moonway. Here comes the Ghost Blade. They're trying to chase down onto the rest of Trick's army, but Trick is going to back away from this one. Matt Life has a stun charge available. Fishing for Earth is extremely, extremely low. The gold counts in favor of Night Blue's team might be enough to keep them alive for now, but they gotta be really, really careful, and they still gotta survive for minutes at a time in order for these inhibitors to come back up. Strompus has rejoined the fray. The NARP, which is four of them against the inhibitor, but Matt Life taking out extremely low. Emperor's Divide cutting off the path from the base here. Who might take it out extremely low? Corky picked up that kill. But one Nexus Tower goes down in favor of Trick's team. They're going down now on the Strompus. Fishing for Urban Strompus. Both go golden. They both go down. It's a trade of kills. Lissandra picks up one. Jonna picks up the other. The other Nexus Tower is going to end up going down. Night Blue falls. All that's left is Annie against a Jack, a dead Corky, and a Jonna. Annie goes down. The gates are open, Siva. And Trick 2G and his team pick up the second kill of the week here. They dance to celebrate the minions are gonna take the nexus down night blue's team goes to one and two trick ties boy boy at two and one and that's all she wrote here at the omen encounter week two trick 2g showing the maximum disrespect there fully aware that he played out of his mind that game backed up by his teammates despite not having the best kda ratios they out rotated and outplayed their opponents in just about every situation applying significantly more pressure and just coming out as the stronger team despite the fact that they may not have chose the best time to team fight i i gotta say that was really impressive stuff coming out from trick's team it was a at the end of the game after all the time